Did they really steal my video? Is that copyright infringement? Do they have the right to use my content on their channel? Good day, guys. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American learning to live down under here in beautiful Sydney, Australia. So I know most of my videos are Australia based and once in a while I do talk about YouTube and what it's like doing YouTube over here in Australia. So if you're here for purely Australian content, this is probably not the video. I've got a ton of other videos that you guys can watch, but today's video is about reacting to a reaction video on one of my videos, kinda sorta. I'm not going to react so much to this video made by The Commodity, who actually did a reaction video to a video that I posted about words that Australia has that America doesn't. Now, I'm going to do a deep dive into the analytics of what happened. Did I get any subscribers from this? Did I get any higher engagement because of this? And what happened when a channel with over 80,000 subscribers reacts to one of my videos where I only have 3,000 subscribers? Let's see what the statistics are, let's see what happened, and let's see how everything sort of played out with this. The Commodity is a pretty well-known reaction channel, at least pretty well known to my subscribers. The Commodity is one of the channels that is regularly listed as channels that my subscribers also watch. I'm also subscribed and even though I don't watch a ton of their videos, once in a while they do post something that does sound pretty interesting and I will tune in, watch it, and if it's something that I genuinely enjoyed, I'll like or leave a comment. But one thing I was curious about, I knew it would probably be a matter of when and not if, but when somebody else would pick up one of my videos and do a reaction. This is fairly common over here on YouTube. Reaction videos are a very popular niche, and even though some of them are very well done, some of them are absolutely terrible and 100% fall into copyright infringement territory. Now, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a legal expert either in Australia or in America. There is an incredible, well done video that I will post down below for you guys to watch. Even though it is over 40 minutes, it is worth every single second. I promise you, you will learn so much about copyright, about reaction videos and whatnot from watching this, whether you're a YouTuber or not. I highly recommend checking this video out. It is so entertaining and informative. But I knew one day somebody would do a reaction to one of my videos. I didn't know who it would be. I didn't know which of my videos they would pick. But it is pretty common when you're making videos like this for other people to react to this type of content. So today I'm going to share some of the analytics, some of the sort of YouTube behind the scenes, if you want to call it that, and let you know exactly what happens when a reaction channel reacts to a video from a smaller channel. So on May 5th, The Commodity reacted to a video that I posted on May 2nd, just three days earlier, about 10 words that Australia has that America doesn't even have a word for. That original video was 14 minutes and 10 seconds long, whereas The Commodity's video ended up being 29 minutes and 9 seconds. So even if they had included every single second of video that I had created, they still added on almost an entire 15 minutes of original content of their content onto the reaction video. So most reaction channels know that you have to do this absolute one thing and that is linked to the original video. Obviously the commodity did that here. They do in big bold words say go check out the original channel with the original video link down below. They do that all the way up at the top. It's not something that's lost at the bottom. So they're not trying to hide the original creator's work and this is something that's very common with the better reaction video channels. They do highlight going to the original person's content. They put that up at the top, they put the link there for other people to go to, and they do mention the name of the channel or the person on the channel. They do mention to go there, they say it a couple times, go check out this person's content, go check out this person's channel, give them a like, give them a subscribe, whatever it is that the reaction channel does say. 
but that is a way to go that something is a good reaction channel is that they link the original video they add so much more content than what the original video is typically a good reaction video is going to be significantly longer than the original video that they're reacting to at least if they're including 80 percent or more of the content if they're a reaction channel that uses maybe like 40 to 60 percent it might not be too unusual for the video lengths to be about the same it depends on how much they cut off now, I have reacted to the videos in the past, and typically what I do is I try to get down to about 60% of the original content. I do have two videos that I reacted to, which are pretty common videos. This one's like years and years old. This one, even though it is fairly new, and I did post the reaction, I think, a day or two after it went live. I tried to use about 60% of the original content, which gives my viewers a chance to actually go and check out the original and still have original content to listen to, to watch when they go see the original video. Yes, it is quite a bit more editing on my part, but I feel like as a creator, this is something that I need to do to help other creators to not steal their content Typically what I do is I use less of the content. That's me, that's my style, that's just my preference when I'm filming and when I'm editing. But it does take significantly more work because not only am I editing my own video, I'm also cutting down and to a degree editing the original video as well. So it's like double the work, but I feel like it is worth the reward and it's so much less risk, less the worry of getting a copyright claim against me. So I've seen this video before. I'm not going to replay much of it. I'm not reacting to their reaction video of me. I saw it when it first came out. I did comment actually. There we go. It did end up being like the most liked comment. So anybody who liked the comment, thank you. It was also how about the commodity and their algorithm as well. But I didn't scour every single second that they used. But from what I remember filming and remember editing, it looks like they did use in that 80 to 100% of my content range. So they did end up using most, if not all, of my video when they started filming, when they reacted. So unlike my style, they didn't cut it down to about that 60-ish percent mark. They did use most, if not the entire video when they were filming. Which again, like I said, it's a preference thing. It's between content creators. I think that if you use a little bit less of the original video, it does give your viewers and subscribers a little bit more incentive to go to the original video and view it. But again, I think that does come down to creator preference. I think some creators just can't be bothered to sit there and edit it down to 60% of the video, especially because so many reaction channels post daily, if not twice a day. The reality is with these reaction channels, exposure does not really gain you that much subscribers. And I will even prove it to you guys and show you the numbers. YouTube analytics does give a lot of really good information and a lot of breakdown because it does help me sort of narrow in on who my target audience would be when I'm making these kinds of videos. And as you can see, other channels my audience has watched in the last 28 days, the commodity is right up there with IW Rocker, another very popular reaction channel, along with Rob Reacts, who also does a lot of reaction videos with Australian content. I personally am actually subscribed to IW Rocker and The Commodity. I don't know if I've seen any videos from Rob Reacts. Maybe they just haven't popped up on my homepage. But I know that a lot of my viewers, a lot of my subscribers do also watch The Commodity's videos. I have 3.5 thousand subscribers at the time I'm filming this. They have over 80 thousand subscribers. So you think that there would be a little bit more of an increase in my subscriber count or my viewer count. Let's see what the numbers actually show within that week after I posted my video and the commodity posted theirs. So here we go to custom and my video came out on the 2nd and they posted theirs on the 5th. So I will go to the 4th and see how many subscribers were gained in those three days before the commodity posted their video. So you can see here I have 118 new subscribers. If you're one of those 118, hi. Um, nice to see you. So glad you came. So for those first three days, I had 9.8K returning viewers, 15.4K unique views, and then 118 subscribers gained. Now, taking a look at how many subscribers I gained from the 5th, and we'll do another three days. So we'll do the 5th to the 7th. Okay. 
and you can see here I actually gained fewer subscribers. I gained 72 subscribers within those few days. Now, typically my subscriber count does increase a little bit more after I post a new video. Typically within the 24 to 48 hour range, I'll see a little bit more of a spike and then there's a pretty steady increase in subscribers who join my channel. But let's give the commodity a little bit more time, time differences, whatnot. Let's do a full week. So I will go from the 2nd of May to the 9th of May and let's see how many subscribers I gained and you can also see day to day the spikes. So on the 2nd, I posted my video and had 13,000 views that day. Going all the way down to the 5th, which is when the commodity posted their original video, I was down to 4,199 views that day, which is still a pretty good number of views personally. I mean, I remember when I was just starting, it was getting like a couple hundred a day and I was super excited about that. So seeing it jump up to 4,000 is pretty amazing. But again, my subscriber count didn't increase until I posted a new video on the 8th and that started to increase a little bit more in terms of views. In terms of audience and subscribers, I feel like this is where it gets really interesting because on the 2nd of May when I posted, I gained 66 new subscribers that day. And then on the 5th of May when the commodity posted their videos, I gained 25 which was a couple more than the day before at 22. There was a slight uptick at 32, and then it went back down to 15 on the 7th. So even though there was that very slight increase on the 6th, there might have been a couple people who came over from the Commodities channel, but when I say a couple, I genuinely mean like a couple. The day after I had posted my video on the 2nd, I got 30 subscribers, and then I got 32nd when the Commodity posted their video. So taking the commodity out of this, what is it like on a week before any reactions? So this is before my video was on their channel. So I don't know if this is still based in American times, which might be why things are being thrown off just a little bit. I know I didn't post on the 25th because the 25th was Anzac Day. The following day on the 26th, I had posted my reaction to Isaac Butterfield's video. So it says the 25th, I'm not sure why because in Australia time it was the 26th, so maybe my stuff is still based in American time because I'm using my very old American laptop. But you can see in the week beforehand, my subscriber count was still pretty high. It was actually double that entire week than what it was for the entire week after. You can also see there's a high number of returning viewers and a high number of unique viewers as well. Like here on the 30th, I didn't post anything and there was a spike that was the highest that week of 88 subscribers and nobody had reacted to any of my videos, nobody had really done anything extra to my channel. So those random spikes are sometimes just from the algorithm showing your video to more people, more people being interested in it, more people liking your content, more people subscribing. It doesn't necessarily correlate that those couple of extra viewers for that one week came from the commodities reaction video. So overall, having exposure through reaction channels does absolutely nothing for other channels. So as you can see, subscribers gains were negligible. It was pretty much in tune and in align with what I'd already had going and was on a pretty consistent basis. As you can see, exposure in these types of reaction videos does absolutely nothing because typically whoever watches a reaction video isn't going to go back to the original video and rewatch it, especially when these reaction videos post anywhere between 80 to 100% of the original content. I do think that in this case, there was a genuine reaction to this. Whether they had pre-watched the video or not, and whether you want to call it a genuine reaction or not, is not necessarily the point I'm trying to make here. I call it a genuine reaction because they are actually reacting to the video. Even though it is like technically a one-sided conversation, it's almost like they're having a bit of a conversation with me throughout the video, making their own notes, their own comments. They're not just sitting there and laughing at something I said or said, no, I don't agree with that, or said, oh yeah, that's cool, and moved on. They did add a lot of their own original commentary to the video, which I think does make it a genuine reaction video. 
could I file a copyright claim with YouTube against the commodity for this video? Technically, yes, but will I? No. Because again, I do feel like this does fall under a genuine reaction. Now, this doesn't mean that any reaction channel can take any of my videos and not risk getting a copyright claim. It depends on how it's done and if there is genuinely original content and something extra to be had. I feel like when you watch this commodities video, you get to see two more Americans' reactions to content and what it's like between America and Australia. I'm one person, I have one viewpoint, and they did add quite a bit, some positive, some negative, to what I added before. And I feel like that really does give our audiences, especially the audiences that cross-pollinate, a really, really good understanding of just how different America can be. Because I know that a lot of Aussies do understand that America is a huge country with over 380 million people and 380 million ideas and opinions and experiences. But not all reaction channels are like this. Unfortunately, there are some that basically take another channel's content, recycle like 90 to 100 percent of it, add nothing to it, and then repost it. And I feel like those are the types of channels that should have copyright claims on every single video that they make, so that way that type of behavior is just discouraged because I feel like that is genuine stealing. You are stealing somebody else's content, getting ad revenue from their content, and I feel like that is completely unethical. And if a reaction channel were to do that, I would absolutely file a copyright claim. But most reaction channels that I subscribe to, that I follow, that I comment and like on, are genuine reaction videos where you do see a little bit of back and forth. You get to see another person's opinion. You get to see them interact with the content. So as far as exposure helping this channel, that was an absolute myth. My subscriber count did not jump up. Remember, the commodity has over 80,000 subscribers. At the time I'm filming this, I have 3.5. So overall, this did not help me in terms of gaining views or subscribers or increasing my engagement, ad revenue. None of that increased when they made a reaction video to my original video. Because again, most people just watch the reaction, they don't go back to the original video. So that is it for you guys, just a little behind the scenes of what happened when a reaction channel reacted to one of my videos. So that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it was informative at least. If you thought it was entertaining, hit the like and subscribe button down below to join our little Amer Australian family. I post on Mondays and normally Thursdays about the differences between American and Australian culture and the overall process of learning to live down under. My name's Caitlin and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.